Well, hello guys, and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today, I thought that we would go ahead and finish this mandala that I started with the Color It Glitter Gel Pins. I did, if you've seen my last video, and uh, if not, you can go back in my um, uh, videos and find the first part of this. You seen that I was having problems with this glitter gel pen, which again is very unusual for the color gel pens. I normally do not have any problems with these whatsoever. Um, so this is kind of a fluke, but I did manage to get it going again off screen, but I am still having some problems with it. So what I thought we would do is go ahead and um, change out the, uh, the refill. This is what the refills that you get look like. It's a 48 pack for the 48 gel pens. How appropriate, huh? Um, so this is what they come like. And when you open them up, they come in all these little separate plastic packets. Okay. So I have a set that I took out of the little plastic packets already, and I just keep them in here like this. So, if you look on the tube, and you're probably not going to be able to see this too well, um, but it does say glitter cerulean and then a number, C252. Again, I don't know if you can see that or not. So, the C252, the number, the alpha character and the number is what's going to be on these refills. So what I do is I kind of just glance through and see if I can find like a bluish tint one that might be it. And yeah, here's, oh no, that's C255, so that's not it. Let's shake them out. Oh, this might be it. Whoop, grabbed the wrong one. Come on, Lisa. Come on out. Sure, and I'm going to have problems. That's not it. The one that I want won't come out. There it is. And yes, so you can see it says color it and C252. And what I like about these refills versus other refills, some of the refills you get for some of your glitter gel pens will have a number on that corresponds to the number that's in the pen, but it is clear it's not it doesn't have any ink to it so you can feel where the number is but you really got to turn it to try to get to figure out what the heck the number is on the refill um, so they're very very hard to read and very hard to see um, but these are nice and clear so all you do if you've never refilled gel pens which I'm sure the majority of you have if you've colored with gel pens whatsoever all you got to do is take unscrew the tip Take this one out, even though I might still try to work on that one to <laughs> get it going. Then you take the, what did I do with it? Oh, here it is. You take the refill. You have to pull off the little plastic tip. Put it back in your gel pen and just screw the lid back on. And you're ready to go. So what I do then is I take a scrap piece of paper just to make sure that it's going right away. Let's move this out of the way and you're ready to color. So let's put these on the side. Okay, so let's get back at this mandala. I was gonna have the blue colored in before, let me, oh, I forgot to put my mic back on, okay. I was gonna start recording before and Bella, my little doggy, started barking away because there was a dog. Somebody was walking their dog outside and she just goes nuts when she sees any dog out there. So let me zoom you back in. Okay, so let's finish this blue that my gel pens didn't seem to want to. Boy, it's gotta be something about this blue. What is it? My goodness. And I've used this color before and I never had a problem. Maybe this one was just, it had to get going yet. But yeah, as I was saying, my 
little Bella was just going nuts. So I'm glad at least she started it this time before I started recording. So I had to wait a little bit. And uh, I had gotten up off my chair and took my mic off to go see what the heck she was barking at because I was already in here. And yeah, yeah, it was somebody walking their dog. Okay, so we got the blue done. Now, if you've seen my last video, you know that I kind of screwed this up as I was coloring. <laughs> so we kind of had to improvise. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and fill in the uh, blues that I missed last time because the gel pen wasn't working. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful day today. I am recording this on the same day as the first part so for me I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be loading getting this up on YouTube but for me it is still Saturday and uh, so it is the weekend I know not everybody has today off because there's a lot of you that have to oh that's supposed to be green let's fill that in no that's supposed to be purple what? Okay, I really screwed something up on this one, didn't I? Oh, yeah, that's right. I filled in the purple on there where it should have been blue. Yeah. This uh, mandala is going to be totally screwed up. Oh, well. We're just coloring for enjoyment, aren't we? That's what I keep telling myself. And then when I do stuff like this, it bugs me to no end. If I call, you know, I'm coloring one of my designs and stuff and I, you're following a pattern throughout the design and if you mess it up, it's like, oh, that bothers me. And if you can possibly fix it, of course you do, but many times it's just not possible. And I guess it is what it is. Okay, so... This one, too, was screwed up, so. Again, there's too much blue in this area. Blue comes down to blue. Yuck. That bugs me. So, what is everybody coloring today? Anybody doing the uh, Jade Summers? challenge. I know there's a lot of other challenges out there, uh, especially after watching Shalene from Coloring Book Nook and uh, stating all the collaborations and color alongs that are going on. It's like, oh my heavens. Wowzers, there's a lot going on. I love the Jade Summer. Um, in January though because I have a ton of their books I like everybody else initially thought that Jade Summer was a person was a gal so I always said her books <laughs> I like her books and it's not it's a company from what I understand it's two brothers Nick is one I never heard who the other brother is but I guess it's two brothers that are in business together and they um, publish all these Jade Summer books and I did also hear and I think Ann mentioned this and I think Donna just mentioned it on a video uh, that she did today that we did hear from Nick that they are going to be putting out more Jade Summer Grayscale books yay so excited um, those are my absolute favorites and I think that there are a lot of other people's favorites too um, heard from a lot of people, and they evidently did too, that I think we'll do this in purple. That's going to be a big area. Um, that a lot of people really enjoy the Grayscale books. I think more and more people are getting into them. And Jade Summers 
types of grayscale books are so easy to color. I mean, if you've ever, ever been, like me, intimidated by grayscale, gosh, try these first. You will love them. Especially if you like straight coloring, but yet have your picture look so pretty at the end. There's, you know, you don't have to do any of the shading to get a really nice looking picture. I'm off camera again. Starting out with a bang. Um, you get such a beautiful picture by the end because all of the shading and whatnot is done for you. So you color like, uh, say, one of the gal's dresses or whatnot in one color. But yet when you're done with the picture, it looks like you spent hours blending and shading and, and whatnot. So they're a lot, a lot of fun. Very, very stress-free coloring, just like this, you know, coloring the mandalas and patterns and all of that. My designs with my gel pens are just so stress-relieving for me. But coloring in those Jade Summer books, especially the grayscale books, oh, they're just so much fun. And yes, very stress-relieving. Anybody with anxiety, depression... Um, like I have, <laughs> like many of us that color have, and, you know, one of the reasons why we got into coloring in the first place, have issues, whether it be, you know, psychological type issues like uh, depression, anxiety, or whether you have physical issues that... Well, let's face it, physical issues alone can lead to anxiety and depression. So you kind of got double whammy there. You know, not only are you hurting physically, but it can affect you mentally too. So coloring is an awesome escape for all of that. As all of us colorists know, Yes, we do it for enjoyment, of course, but it's kind of an escape, isn't it? Just kind of escape for a while, and I'm sure you're, you you do like me. Now I gotta make sure I don't smear that purple up there. Um, where you like to listen to color and chats while you color. And I just love doing that. Curl up in my chair, get my gel pens out or my markers, and color away while I'm listening to somebody talk in the background. <laughs> Look up every once in a while and see how they're doing. Or if they are talking about something that I want to comment or they ask a question and I comment on it, and uh, so then I'll, I'll put my comment in, go back to coloring. Well, then they say or ask something else. So it's like, oh, I've got to add to that comment. So then you either put another comment down or typically what I'll do is I'll edit my comment and add to it. Well, then that might happen again. you got to <laughs> edit it again. And uh, so I've, I've already edited comments to people's videos a number of times. Just kind of added to it as they uh, either ask questions or were talking about something that you wanted to comment on. As I color, I you can see I kind of just go back and forth. Sometimes, depending on the pen, it seems like it works better whether you go this way or whether you go that way. Um, so it all it all kind of depends. Again, I'm going to be moving this mandal around as I color because I don't know how some of you do it, but you twist, you can twist your arm around and, and you can color like that. I can't do that. <laughs> I would be out of the lines constantly. I always have to turn my book so that it's most comfortable for me to color 
like I said, I color um, this way, well, mainly up and down really well. But once you start getting to a, an area where you really got to color sideways, I have a harder time with that. So I'll go as far as I can sometimes so that I'm not constantly flipping the book. But yeah, I still got to turn it every which way. Which designs and, and patterns and mandalas are a little bit different if you're coloring a regular picture. You know, say a flower picture or a person. Those types of pictures, you might not have to flip it around quite as much. But things like this, I, I have a tendency to have to flip around. Hope I'm not making anybody dizzy. Oh, no. We are out of ink. It's a good thing I brought the refills. Or I would have to pause. No, I don't have to. So, again, you just take off the tip. There's no number on here. What? Well, maybe the initial ones that came with the pens didn't. That's odd, isn't it? Let me see if this blue one did. No, it's only the re I didn't even notice that. It's only the refills that actually have the number on them. These that come in the pens initially, if you can see that, they have no names or numbers on. Because it's on the barrel of the pen, I suppose. But you would think they would have all of the tubes made the same way. But they must not be. Okay, so this one is the Glitter Vineyard C. 265. So let's get back out our refills. And I know I'm zoomed in because of the the coloring, but I will try to quickly. Here we go. Nope. C262. Is that what I said? Nope. 265. Because I color with purple so much, I hope I didn't use this one up. Or I might have to grab my other pack of refills. 261. Mmm, don't tell me I'm going to have to go go get my other refills. Let's see, let's just take them all out. I don't think, here's, oh, here it is, 265. Oh, yay. That's what I said, right? Yeah, 265. Okay. I will put these back in the box later. Okay, take the plastic tip off. And then we just put it back in and put the tip on. I usually shake it a couple times and then scribble on a piece of scrap paper and we are ready to go. Which way was I going? Let's go this way. No, I'm kind of in the way then. Okay. Well, we'll see how long Bella stays quiet this time. Even though it's really cold out, you still see quite a few people taking their dogs for their walks. Like I said in my last video, it is just bitterly, bitterly cold here. And I've heard a lot of YouTubers, a lot of colorists out there, saying the same thing, how cold it is by you. Even in the southern states, um, I guess it's, you know, really cold. So it's like, holy cow, the whole country. Besides, like I said in my last video, I, I think California was supposed to be really hot right now. 
You know, that poor California, it's like feast or famine over there. They either have droughts or they have rain upon rain upon rain. And what made it so much worse this time is all that rain came after all those devastating fires. I just, oh, they have really had a time out there, haven't they? We've had so many big, well, I guess a fire isn't a natural disaster, but all the big hurricanes and flooding and, I mean, it's just been one thing after another. Earthquakes in other countries and volcano eruptions. I mean, look what was happening in Hawaii. Wonder if is that still going on? Must not be as bad. I haven't heard of it in a while, but and there's all of other volcanoes and I mean it's just it's been awful. The loss of life has just been unreal. Starting to get a little bit better where I'm at, but now that I'm following this on my iPad, it still seems like I'm doing things backwards when I'm trying to move stuff. And I think it's because I have to remember, I'm trying to line this up in the middle of my phone up here. And I, you know, my camera is at one end, you know, it, it's at this end and it's not in the middle. <laughs> So I have to remember, oh, okay, my camera's over here, so I can't center it in my phone. I have to put it at the end of my phone. So, yeah, I'm hoping with each video I put out that I, I will get a little bit better. and Maybe I'll actually finally get the hang of this a little bit. But I do see even the best of yous do once in a while get off screen once in a while, you know, with your coloring. So I guess I don't, I, I know I'm not the only one, but I feel I do it more than everybody else. <laughs> so my doggie is quiet so far. We'll see. Bob took her up to the mailbox to get the mail before. And that's not real far. It's just kind of up the street, just a teeny bit, and on the other side, where we have our bank of mailboxes. And uh, yeah, by the time she got back, she was picking up her feet pretty good. Poor doggy. I mean, it's cold enough for us, you know, and we can dress up and put on all the warm clothes and boots and gloves and, but. I know I wouldn't even pay to buy her any booties to put on. I know some people put the little the little booties on their dogs. And especially up here, it would be nice because of, well, you know, any of the northern states where you have to put salt and stuff down in winter. Well, that's not good for their pads on their feet either. So it would be really nice if she would wear uh, the booties, but no, I, I know better than to even try. She wouldn't even let me clip her nails. I always have to take her in to have her nails clipped. She hates her feet being touched. Which, I guess is pretty normal if you haven't done it from puppy on. Just kind of like a, a cat, too. I know some people clip their cat's nails and I've never done that. I've always had cats that have uh, always scratched on the scratch pads, you know, and they, they lose their, their nail sheath that way because, you know, like dogs, their cat, their uh, nails are, are always growing too. And they have to lose that nail sheath all the time so that the other nail underneath can grow. And yeah, they, they use the scratch pad really good. So I haven't really had a big problem with 
my cat's, you know, nails getting too long. Thank heavens they don't. I used to have one that scratched on my couch, on the front. Oh, I don't have that couch anymore, but yeah. Front of it looked like heck. But I am lucky I don't have any cats that scratch anything anymore other than the scratch pad. I do, however, and this is even, if not as annoying, more annoying, I have one that chews cords. Do any of you have cats that chew cords? My other three, when, when my fourth cat was still here, they were just fine. They didn't chew cords, but the one I have now yet, her name is Misty. And she's a muted calico. She's really pretty, really soft. But yeah, she chews and chews and chews cords. So what we do is my boyfriend goes down to the auto parts store that we have here in town. And he gets what's called wire loom. And I'm off camera again. I don't know if you've heard of wire loom, but it's, I think it's made for, um, for putting wires together. It's a, like a little plastic coil. And uh, it's got like a, a slice through it so you can slide in wiring and stuff and keep it together. Well, works great to put around cords too. So I have like my charging cords, my uh, my uh, laptop charging cord, my uh, lamp cords, you name it. Unfortunately, all has to have wire loom. And yeah, it's it's a sight. And boy, to keep all them cords untangled and stuff is worse than if you don't have to put that wire loom on, but at least it saves the cords. And, you know, some would be more destructive than other, like the time she chewed up, I have a Kirby vacuum, and anybody that has a Kirby vacuum knows how expensive, let's start over here so I don't smear that one, knows how expensive Kirby vacuums are, but they should last me. You know, they, they typically will last you for the rest of your life. So, okay, let's move down here. So, um, but yeah, she chewed the cord on my Kirby to the point where it didn't work. I was so upset. But my handy dandy boyfriend, who's my fixer, that man can fix anything, you know, look at it and figure it out and fix it. He spliced the wires back together inside and re-taped it all up, insulated it and stuff. So, and that was quite a while ago and it's still working, so. So yeah, she I call her my sassy pants because she is the most cuddliest, snuggliest kitty. And so soft, but <laughs> you get your hand in front of her face or something while you're petting her or whatever, she'll turn around and nip at you. It's like, hey, I am petting you. So yeah, Bella loves to go after her. I think it's because she wants to play with the kitty. Now, of course, Misty doesn't want anything to do with that. So... <laughs> She just kind of bats at Bella. She's like, eh, eh No way. Not going to happen. But then Bella will go after my other cats once in a while, and they absolutely dislike Bella to the max. And especially my black cat, Midnight. Mmm, those two tangle. Oh. I don't know why Bella can't get it through her head that if you don't mess with him, he's not going to mess with you. Nope. Some of it, I think, is the protection mode in her or something because I know she goes after midnight more 
when my granddaughter Maddie is around. If Maddie comes like into this room at midnight's in here, then yeah, Bella doesn't like that. And I don't know if she thinks that midnight's gonna hurt Madison or what. I don't know. I just, I have not figured it out yet. I know sometimes she'll go, you know, run after a cat, you know, if her food is down and the cat is getting too close to her food. The cat's food's in here in a different room, but, you know, of course they smell food. They're going to want to possibly eat it. And yeah, Bella don't like that. Of course. Of course, she don't want it though until the cats come and are sniffing it. Yeah, then she'll start eating. <laughs> kind of like kids, I guess. Don't want a toy until somebody else wants it. Some other kid's looking at their toy. Ooh. Then it's their favorite toy in the world. Could have sat for a year, but now all of a sudden it's my favorite toy. Yeah, I have to laugh. I uh, We take uh, Bella's harness off. She's got a harness that goes around her neck and then down around her ribcage, which is much better for her than just the one around the neck because she likes pulling on the leash so bad. And she would, once in a while, she would just start hacking and stuff. And it's probably because it was, you know, she pulls so hard and it pulls in her throat and probably like her vocal cords or something. So I ended up getting her a little purple harness. Imagine that, purple. And uh, so, yeah, I got this harness on her and I take it off every night so that she can get a little relief from it. And I, every night after I take her out potty for the last time and then I take off her, her, I call it her bra. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's pretty much like we have to wear, you know. <laughs> Goes around the front uh, and up around her shoulders. Uh, so I always say, okay, Bella, we can take your bra off now. Or in the morning when I got to put it back on. Okay, Bella, let's get your bra on. <laughs> My boyfriend just kind of looks at me like, okay. Oh, yeah. Got to keep it funny, right? Yeah, I'm sure hoping. I don't know what your 2018 was like, but ours was pretty rough. Well, especially for my boyfriend. Because, well, let's get you back over here. Um, we found out the beginning of last year, I think it was in March, that Bob had esophageal cancer. And while no cancer by any means is great, you know, they're all awful, awful, awful. But esophageal cancer is particularly a nasty one. He was really lucky in that he had symptoms early enough in, he, well, last November already, October, November, he was starting to have problems swallowing food. It was starting to get stuck in his throat. And so when he went to the doctor, of course, he got referred to GI Associates, a specialist who kind of just felt that he needed to have his esophagus stretched. Because that does start happening, I guess, periodically. As we age, sometimes our esophagus can start constricting. So, yeah, well, of course, Bob waits until he just can't take it anymore because he's hardly able to eat any food anymore. He was starting to lose weight. And uh, so 
I go with him. He had to go for an endoscopy. And I go with him because, of course, he's, you know, put under for that. And uh, so he can't drive. And, yeah, we got the shock of our life. It was not a constricted esophagus. It was a rather large tumor that he sent in. They took a biopsy, but Dr. Johnson, with his experience, was pretty sure just by looking at it that, yeah, it, it was cancerous. It had all the signs. And uh, when the biopsy came back, though, it came back undetermined, which, which just, you know, floored Dr. Johnson because he's like, that is weird. So we had to go back in, take another biopsy, send that one in. And, yeah, that one came back that it was definitely cancerous. And, of course, it was only going to get worse over time if we did not do something about it. I keep saying we like it was happening to me. <laughs> no. I mean, yes, an illness like that affects everybody in the family, but I didn't go through what he all went through. Oh, my gosh. What that man went through last year with this cancer and all the treatments he did have to go through, chemo and radiation, and the additional testing that they did, this is what we were most nervous about, is the fact, did it spread? You know, that's, that's the first biggest thing that you want to know is did it spread outside the esophagus, outside that one uh, tumor. So we were anxiously awaiting that report because that would change the whole treatment plan and everything. It would change his, you know, what level of cancer because they, they give you levels um, that you're at, whether, you know, it has spread or, or whatever. And that part, at least, was good news because it had not spread. It was possibly in the lymph nodes um, around the tumor in the esophagus, but they were kind of planning on removing those anyhow, just in case. So, yeah, they wanted him to go through chemo and radiation first before they did surgery because they wanted the tumor shrunk a little bit or as much as possible before they did surgery. And so he started that in, I think, June. And... Uh, Radiation every day, and uh, Monday through Friday, and then chemo and radiation on Mondays. So he was there a long time on Mondays. Other days it was quite short. The radiation doesn't take long at all. But And he never got, you know, they gave him, you know, anti-nausea drugs in case he needed them and stuff, but... He never got real sick, real nauseous from it. But what did happen after he was on the chemo and radiation, and I'm not sure which one, I'm, I'm thinking it was the radiation, but it made his throat hurt so bad because that radiation was like giving the inside of his throat a severe, severe sunburn, pretty much. I mean, it was, it was cooking the inside of his throat. And so the poor guy, you know, hasn't been able to eat for a while the way it is. And 
now the tumor is shrinking, so he's finally able to start. Oh, I might as well leave that open. He's finally able to start, you know, eating a little bit. But then, you know, with, uh, oh, forgot a couple, forgot some here, didn't I? Um, with, uh, now his throat hurting so bad, it was hard for him to eat anything. And because of the fact that, uh, even before he had surgery, because of the fact that he wasn't getting any food down whatsoever, he had to have a tube put in for feedings and uh, it's called a J tube because it went in not his stomach but it went into his small intestine and then at night I would set up his feedings for him because uh, he would get his feedings at night and it ran like for 12 hours or so so you know we would start him at like say you know, four or five o'clock, and depending on how many of the cans of formula he had to have would depend on how long that that took, how long that particular feeding took. Well, when he wasn't eating any food at all, we had to give him six, well, they were cartons of formula. I jokingly told him that he was referring, reverting back to babyhood. <laughs> Because he had to not only have formula, but because where that J-tube went, went into, I mean, person's got to laugh, right? Where that J-tube went into his, you know, went in his skin and stuff, there was a little plastic flange that was on the outside of his body yet. And that would get so sore under there. I mean, it would just be red raw, and so they told him to put Desidin under there. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I told him he was reverting back to, to babyhood. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. We have, let's go up here. We have three circles here, and I'm going to do a yellow background. So, there's two smaller ones and a big one. Hmm. Now we're using three other colors besides the yellow, so do we want to do um, purple, green, and blue, and then a back background, or a yellow background? Hmm, yeah, why don't we do that? And because we have the least amount of green, I think I'll do the bigger ones green. And let's do the top ones. Where's the least amount of purple if we're going to do one purple? I guess it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, we'll do purple on the bottom, I guess. Well, I don't know. There's so much purple in here already. Maybe I will just do blue, green, blue. Maybe we'll do that. Kind of even out the color a little bit. Let's see how that's going to look with the green in the middle. And I don't know if I'll even get this done today on camera. It may be where I'll get as far as I can because I see I've, I've been on for almost 45 minutes already. Wow, how time flies. Um, but I guess to continue that story about my boyfriend, um, and I hope I'm not boring anybody to tears, anybody that has had a loved one go through any type of cancer can, I'm sure, totally relate to this story because, uh, yeah, he went through all of his chemo and radiation did shrink the tumor, but boy, it took a long time after the radiation was done and the chemo was done before his throat, I mean, before he was able to eat anything. Finally, little by little, he was able to start, you know, we kind of like me, 
I had uh, bariatric surgery. Oh gosh, that was in 2012, so six years ago. Um, and after surgery, you start back eating on a very limited basis and you go through these phases of clear liquids and then next stage is full liquids and then finally you get onto some soft food and you're there for a while and then finally you can add in some regular food. Well, Bob almost had to go through the exact same thing because for the longest time he could only have clear liquids and then he was able to get down some pudding and some jello and whatnot. And the same was true after in August, beginning of August, because they had to wait, I forgot how long it was, a couple months after he was done with his chemo and radiation before they would do surgery. And boy, let me tell you what they do for surgery. Uh, it's just incredible. They have to remove the entire esophagus and they had to remove the upper part of his stomach. Then they pull up the rest of his stomach into a tube and form a new esophagus out of that. Is that not bizarre or what? I'm like, oh my heavens. And yeah, he was in the hospital for quite a while. We had a doctor because it's a very specialized type of surgery. So of course not every surgeon is going to be doing this type of surgery. And we did manage to find a doctor here and we just loved him because, oops, we're not aligned there. He was so nice. He took the time with you. He answered all your questions. And I mean, he was just a wonderful, wonderful doctor. And then he decided, mm, I have this great opportunity to go somewhere else. I says, you can't go until after his surgery. And he just laughed. So we ended up having to go where we initially thought we were going to have to go, and that is way down in southern Wisconsin. It's about two and a half hour trip for us. And of course, with my dog and my cats and I babysit, you know, my grandkids and whatnot, I couldn't stay down the entire time he was there. They said initially three, four days and that was gonna drive him crazy already. But uh, he ended up having to stay there for, let's see, that was what day in August did he have that? I can't even remember now. But he was in there until Labor Day. And yeah, he was ready to knock somebody's teeth out if they didn't let him out soon. <laughs> but things kept happening where they didn't feel comfortable letting him go. He had IVs in both arms. Why? I don't know. They only used the IV in his left arm. And uh, he actually had two IVs then in the right arm and they never used them. And then he had problems with that where his whole hand just swelled up and his whole arm was getting hot. And so they took those IVs out. So they had to wait for that to, to rectify. And uh, that took a couple days. Well, then he was running a temp and I mean, it was just one thing after another and he is getting so upset. They weren't gonna let him out pretty soon. He was just gonna walk. And I said, Bob, I said, they're keeping you there for a reason. Ah, <laughs> no, I'm gonna get out of here one way or another. So yeah, he, he was there. Gosh, I think it was an entire, I think it was an entire week. Seven days, eight days. Boy, I can't believe I don't remember that anymore, but short memory. Um, and uh, so, yeah, then when uh, 
I only stayed down there that first night and then came back. I, uh, they let me sleep overnight in his room with him on a cot, which I thought was really nice. We went down the night before because he had to be there at five in the morning. So there's no way when we have a two and a half hour trip that, you know, you're gonna do that. So we were able to stay in a hotel right down the street from this monstrous hospital. It's a hospital and clinic in one. It's UW Madison, if anybody has heard of it. Um, so yeah, we stayed in a hotel right near it people that are from the UW, be it patients or whatnot, can get a discounted rate. So that was kind of nice. So, yeah. Went through all that. Surgery itself didn't take real long. I think it was like f four hours or so, which I didn't think was too bad considering what they all had to do. But I ended up having to wait in the waiting room for over nine hours. You know, of course, after surgery, they have to go into post-op, you know, and, and they have to come out, you know, and, and come out of the anesthesia and, you know, they got to check on him, make sure everything's okay before they can move him to his room. And I understand that. I definitely want them to keep a close eye on him for a while. But... The problem was finding them a room. And then, oh, yeah, they'd say, you know, they'd come over and tell me, oh, yeah, it'll be pretty soon they're cleaning a room for them. I'm like, oh, finally. This is after I've been waiting for about probably, oh, probably five, six hours. Finally, an hour later, I go up to the desk and I ask, and he checks into it for me. Oh, yeah, they're still, you know, getting his room ready and stuff. I'm like, I didn't say it, but I thought, how long does it take to get a room ready? I mean, basically, it's got to be cleaned up and sanitized. Sheets cleaned, you know, changed, whatever. It doesn't take that long to get a room ready. I mean, I don't know from personal experience, but I don't know. So I ended up waiting after I asked that last time for a couple more hours before he was actually going to his room. So then they gave me his room number and I was gonna meet him up there and I got there and he wasn't even there yet. Oy, oy, oy. He got there shortly after I got there, but, and then they had me leave the room while they transferred him into his bed because they didn't want me to, see, I don't know, they didn't want me to see him get all hooked up or something, I don't know. So, yeah, that took a while before I could go back in the room. So, after surgery then, you know, get back home. Of course, he's still only on his tube feedings for a long time. And then uh, he had visiting nurse come out to help change his bandages. Because even though it's done laparoscopically, thank God, you know, he still had a number of incisions and he had to come home. He had two chest tubes for drainage and they were able to take the one chest tube out, but the other one had too much coming out of it yet that they did not want to remove. They didn't want to remove the tube yet. So he had that other chest tube in and had to drag around this long hose that, you know, emptied into a container which measured the output of, you know, what was still draining out. He had that one in. Oh, I don't know how long. It's, it's such a pain. You know, he's already dragging around this what looks like an IV pole with a, a bag hanging on it that was his tube feedings every night. And any time he had to get up, go to the bathroom, or, you know, just to do anything, you got to drag around that pole. And again, being the comical person I am, I just, I always called it his dancing partner. I said, 
You want me to go get your dancing partner out and get you set up? <laughs> and then Maddie, so cute. I every night, if she, you know, when she would be here, I'd say, "Should we go get Bumpa's Paul?" So she always had to go with me. Then she calls him Bumpa, and uh, so she'd have to go with me into his bedroom and help me get his ivy pole out or what I think looks like an ivy pole and then she'd have to go with me into the other room and get his cartons of formula and the plastic bag and tubing and then I would I would set it all up through the the thing it's it's very similar to setting and I had to learn all this um, very similar to how the nurses put an IV through those machines, so it regulates the rate at what at what an IV would drip. It's pretty much how these machines. It's called the Joey. Um, pretty much how these feeding machines work. You adjust the rate, how fast it uh, will come out. You know the the feeding will happen. So I would set that all up, and then. You have to prime the tube, and Maddie always had to hold the 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 tube going to Bob as it was priming, because you could see the formula come down the, you know, it would come slowly down the hose and stuff, and so she always had to watch that. <laughs> oh, it's funny the things you remember. So yeah, she'd always want to bring Bumpa's pool out. And yeah, he was on that for a long time, but he was eventually able to finally start adding in some clear liquids and yeah he basically had to go through all the steps I had to with my bariatric surgery because I was telling him you know even before surgery you know I says you know I bet you you're gonna have to go through pretty much what I had to so I kind of knew what to expect for him at least you know I kind of you know I said I don't know I said this is totally totally different than what I had done but if you are going to have to go through, and, and the big booklet that we got explaining it all pretty much sounded like, yes, he was going to go to clear liquids first, full liquids, which, ironically, full liquids, you know, anybody that's had to go through this, full liquids includes more things than just what you think. It's not just liquids. It's pretty much anything you can see through. So it includes, of course, juices, but it also includes jello and popsicles. And yeah, so, I mean, he fell in love with banana popsicles. <laughs> and it only it could only be a certain type of banana popsicles because I got them a cheaper brand from Walmart. They had a big pack of banana popsicles. I think they were like two bucks for like a pack of 12 or something like that. No, he didn't like them, though. <laughs> they didn't have enough banana flavor, which could very well be. He liked these specific banana popsicles from Triggs. So one day I'd be running into Wassa to get him some popsicles for his sore throat. Another day, once he got on some onto soft food and stuff, he really wanted to try some other kinds of soups. So I told them about, you know, like the Progresso soups and stuff. You know, and give them something different to taste once, you know. So I ran into Wasa again for him and got him a bunch of different kinds of soups and got out my little, what was it called? It's one of, oh, the bullet. So I would put the soup in there, add the water, and then grind it up for him so there wasn't big pieces. And that worked for the most part until he was finally able to start more soft foods and, and you know, graduate up to a full diet again. But, and, and that's been quite a while now that he's been on a full diet. He can eat pretty much everything. But he, this man used to just wolf his food down in huge bites. And I don't know, I don't think he hardly 
hardly chewed anything. Well, he's got to chew now. <laughs> and he's got to take small bites. So he's really been forced to change drastically the way he eats. And I think one of the things that bothers him the most out of it all is the fact that, like me, with bariatric surgery, you cannot drink with your meals. And you can't drink shortly before them, and you can't drink for a while after them. Because it fills up your little tummies, and you can't eat as much, and you won't get the nutrients that you need. Well, he would try, he's a huge coffee drinker, which I am not. And I never was a big one to drink with my meals in the first place. So, I mean, I would take a sip of water here and there. But that would be about it. So it, it didn't bother me a whole lot. But him not being able to have coffee with his meal, especially when we go and eat out. Oh, yeah. That, that still really bothers him, not being able to have his coffee. Or even a, a soda at work. They only get a 15-minute break in the morning and a 15-minute lunch. There's no way I'd be able to eat a lunch. And well, I suppose because I can't eat as much now, but still. And that's probably where, you know, all of his jobs, they, you know, you'd have to wolf your food down because you only got basically 15 minutes to eat. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, it just. Ugh. He still would like to have some soda with his lunch, though, and he just cannot do it. So, yeah, there there are just, I see another couple purple things I forgot. Boy, oh, boy. We all kind of do that, though, don't we? <laughs> we uh, managed to miss something. Come on now, I've seen a lot of you do it, too. It happens to the best of ya. Or like what Donna did this morning. I see. I was watching her video, and she accidentally colored the arm. It was what she thought was an arm. She colored it flesh tone, and it was supposed to be a sleeve. And I had to make a comment, you know, because so then she had to color the other sleeve with the flesh tone too. So when you colored the sleeve, it, you know, they would match. And I just I had to make a comment that. I just did that exact same thing yesterday in a jade. She was coloring, color, color, can't talk, coloring out of a Jade Summers book. And I was too. She was coloring out of Chibi Girls. I was coloring out of Kawaii Girls. And yeah, I did the exact same thing. I colored what I thought was skin and it was part of a flower. So I had to color the entire flower with this skin tone and then go back in. I think I made it a peachy color or something like that. No, I don't know. I can't remember now. But yeah, so I had to make a comment that, yep, just been there, did that. <laughs> and I'm off camera again. Hmm. So I'm not sure how long. Oh, yeah, we're over an hour already. So I think we'll just finish the yellows around here. I was going to, I don't know, should I finish this off camera? Do you want me to finish it on camera? It would probably be just one more part. Um, I can definitely just go ahead and finish it off camera, but if you would like to do another color and chat, let me know in the comments. And I would be more than happy to do that. This is my first multi-part color chat. And uh, I think these are my first hour-long videos. So they're getting longer. Watch out. <laughs> like I said, I don't think I could have as long of videos as Anne where they're, you know, three hours because I have a hard enough time thinking of things to talk about for an hour. I mean, this time, yeah, with, you know, talking about, um, you know, my, my boyfriend's cancer and whatnot, that 
That took a while to talk about. But he is doing much better now. He thinks he has carpal tunnel, though. His arms or his hands are going to sleep on him at night. During the day, it doesn't seem so bad. And, yeah, so they're going to sleep. They're aching, and it aches all the way up through his elbow on the right side. I said, Bob, you got to go in and get that checked out. And then another thing, he's got to get checked out, and I keep telling him this, and he keeps putting it off because he doesn't want to have surgery, is I think he has a hernia because there is a, a bulge. Um a little bit above his groin area. And, uh, you know, of course, with him having cancer, you feel a bulge like that, and the first thing you think of is something not good that you don't want to think of. And uh, so, yeah, you just, you never know. You know, once you've had cancer, you know, you just, so, and my zoom out is not working again. Come on, little thing. Okay, I'm going to have to put you up manually. I wonder why that remote turns. I'm going to have to do a, a search for that and, and see if I can get that thing from stopping to turn off automatically. So anyhow, um, that is our color along today. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Just like I hope I can get Bob to go into the doctor for those two things. Um, I told him you wouldn't necessarily need surgery. They say if, you know, the hernia isn't that bad, sometimes they just leave it go. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily have to have surgery. Now the carpal tunnel, maybe he would. I told him this morning, I said, Bob, you are just falling apart. And he just kind of laughed. Uh, anyhow, we all have our problems, don't we, it seems. So, I hope uh, you are not totally bored <laughs> today with my uh, stories. Um, but if you have enjoyed this video, as always, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you're notified of any future videos. Again, I'm getting close to 300 subscribers, so I will be doing um, another uh, giveaway shortly. Maybe by the time this is posted, I'll be even closer. Again, I'm not sure when I'm going to be uploading this uh, second part um, up to the YouTube. Um, I'm about 25 away from 300 right now, so hopefully I'll be closer by then. Um, and then I will do a, a, another video, of course, when I do hit that 300 mark. Um, so, um, again, I hope everyone's having a terrific day and as always, happy coloring.